I would like to dwell for some time upon the fourth stanza of the poem, especially the opening lines to pick gingerly and throw, as the priest said, facing east, where three rivers met near the railway station. It is obvious that the speaker, though a participant in the rituals, has absolutely no belief in them. The speaker's sense of humor, the speaker's sense of satire, is exhibited effectively in these lines. Of course, the speaker takes part in the post-cremation rituals, but he has no belief in them. But he thinks they are silly. But he finds them hilarious. I think I've already said that Ekara Manujan rejected his Hindu faith, his Brahmin identity as a very young man. And this rejection is deeply inscribed in the texture, into the texture of the present poem. What would happen if the bones or the discs or the coins were thrown facing west instead of facing east? Nothing would happen. The heavens would not fall. The whole thing is funny. The whole thing is meaningless. The whole thing needs to be cast into the dustbin. That is the attitude of the speaker. Students often say, teachers often say that this poem, obituary, is about the death of the speaker's father, of the poet's father. I would like to go a lot further. The title of the poem has a very wide semantic significance, which may be missed by the casual reader. Of course, obituary means, means death notice. And it is the death notice of the poet's father. But it is also, but it is also the death notice of the poet's identity as a Brahmin. The death notice of the poet's identity as a Brahmin. The poet's identity as a Hindu. It can safely be claimed that the poem obituary is the obituary of A.K. Ramanujan's death or A.K. Ramanujan's identity as a Hindu, as a Brahmin. When someone dies, a death notice is published, an obituary is published. Here, of course, the speaker's father has died, the poet's father has died, but the poet has also died. The poet has died as a Hindu, the poet has died as a Brahmin, and the, the poem obituary is the death notice of that death as well. We have reached the fifth stanza. I would like to draw your attention to the fact that every stanza till now flows into the next stanza. The brilliant use of enjambment by Ekira Manujan gives the poem an organic unity. You get the feeling that it is not a poem cut into stanzas, cut into stanzas, but that all the stanzas join together seamlessly to create an organic whole, to hold in their parenthesis everything he didn't quite manage to do himself, like his cesarean birth in a Brahmin ghetto and his death by heart failure in the fruit market. Notice how the present stanza effortlessly flows out of the previous stanza. This is what I'm trying to impress upon you. The brilliant use of enjambment by the poet, providing the poem with an organic unity. What does the poet say here? Parenthesis. 
What is parenthesis? Parenthesis is a set of words that you add to a sentence, that you insert into a sentence, sometimes as an afterthought. And the set of words is separated from the main part of the sentence by the use of brackets or dashes or even commas. And the sentence is able to convey complete meaning without the material in the parenthesis. I hope I am making myself clear. Parenthesis is a set of words you insert into a sentence, sometimes as an afterthought, in order to amplify, in order to clarify something that is said in the sentence. And the parenthesis is separated from the main part of the sentence using brackets or dashes or commas. And if you remove the parenthesis from the sentence, the sentence doesn't collapse. It is quite capable of conveying complete meaning. To hold in their parenthesis. Typically on a gravestone, on a headstone, two dates are inscribed. The first date is the birth date of the person buried there. The second date is his death date. The poet says that the life of his father who has died, which extended from the birth date to the death date, was a sort of parenthesis. I think I told you that if you remove the parenthesis, nothing happens to the sentence. The sentence refuses to collapse. The sentence continues to survive, continues to exist, continues to convey complete meaning. According to the poet, the life of his father extended from the first date to the second date, from the birth date to the death date, but it was a sort of parenthesis. If you remove the life of the father, nothing happens because it is only a parenthesis. What is the poet trying to convey? The life of the father, which started on his birth date and concluded on his death date, was utterly meaningless, was utterly lacking in significance. The life of his father had nothing to convey. It was only a parenthesis.